introduces a new jet attack bomber. Australian Premier Menzies is on hand to name the plane the Canberra after his country's capital. Christened with Australian champagne, the Canberra joins the Royal Air Force at once. A pair of Rolls-Royce turbojet Avons supply her power and her speed is announced as 600 miles an hour, but most other data is secret. She's ready to fly to America for inspection by U.S. Air Force officers. And now the Canberra heads out to race the sun across the Atlantic. She arrives over Washington after racing with the sun from Britain to Newfoundland, a latitude in which the sun's speed is the same as the Canberra's. Because headwinds slowed the superjet, the sun won the race by 72 minutes and continued on its course. But the Canberra nevertheless set a new Atlantic record of 4 hours and 42 minutes. The plane's three-man crew is congratulated by U.S. officials as the Canberra, a triumph of British aircraft engineering, is welcomed by America. A unique machine for conditioning jet plane pilots for bailing out at supersonic speeds is demonstrated at William Air Force Base in Chandler, Arizona. Here, the seat, a duplicate of a real jet plane cockpit, will slide on rails up a metal track. Just as in flight, the propulsion force used to throw the seat free of the plane is produced by the powder charge of a 37 millimeter shell. The pilot himself will set it off. Propulsion force is dissipated, the seat comes to a halt on a ratchet and is lowered automatically. As under actual emergency conditions, the airman is subject to a pull of 14 times gravity and shoots upward at 60 miles per hour. The Air Force overlooks no precaution for safety. Alto, California, the world's first jet helicopter is unveiled by its inventor, youthful Stanley Hiller, Jr. The essence of simplicity, the helicopter is powered by two small jet engines which weigh only 11 pounds each and have no moving parts. In a matter of minutes, they can be attached to the tips of the rotors. The plane is practically foolproof and fuelproof. It runs on almost anything that burns. Gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel, or even castor oil. The plane flies with only two controls and has fewer gadgets than the average automobile. Mr. Hiller plans an inexpensive two-passenger commuter model, which, like this, will remain stable even with no hands on the controls. For the present, however, production must be exclusively for the armed forces.